Once again, uh, we are going over parables, which is kingdom parables. Okay. So Jesus was so serious about this um, lesson about the kingdom of God. So because it is really important for us to know what is kingdom like so that we could really see uh, this kingdom of God in our daily lives. Um, when Jesus was with them, uh, he could teach them. He could help them. But after he ascended to heaven, disciples will be left. And then they need to carry out the calling and mission, and they need to uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they need to know how to enjoy the kingdom of God and then expand the kingdom of God while they carry it out. So um, she just said, for the kingdom of God, you need to be trained. It's not going to be taking place automatically, Right? Jesus trained his disciples to get to know the kingdom of God. And right before he ascended to heaven, he taught once again about the kingdom of God for 40 days. Why? Because it needs some kind of training. So we need to receive that training so that we could be equipped to really enjoy the kingdom of God and expand the kingdom of God. Um, this is the last parable of the chapter 13, the kingdom parable. Uh, but it seems like, you know, he's repeating the same thing over again. Um, parable of the wheat, like the enemy came and he, after... Uh, she just saw the seed, good seed, right? And then enemy came and he saw the weeds. So both of them growing together. Right now, uh, she just um, gave another parable about the net. And if you throw the net and then you're going to get all the good fish, and bad fish, right? So it's kind of the same par parable, right? Uh, he, it seems like you know, he's repeating. Um, but it has its own emphasis. For the parable of weeds, it's coexistence. Like you, you are uh, growing together with the weeds, like, you know, not the ones who are part of the God's kingdom. So you're going to grow together. That's the emphasis. But for this parable is separation. At the end of the age, the angel will come, and then he's going to separate all the good fishes from the bad. Um, but both of these uh, parables speak of future aspects of the kingdom. So you are uh, preaching the kingdom of God and in the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you need to know future aspects of the kingdom of God so that you, you're not going to be discouraged or frustrated by knowing the spiritual reality. Um, that's his point. And then after he kind of explained everything, shared his parables, uh, and then he asked his disciples, do you guys understand all of this? And they said, say, said yes. Uh, I think they were so confident <laughs> to say that answer. But yeah, of course, they say yes. I, I, I got it. And then she just called them, as a scribe and as a master 
of hearts. It's really interesting. He asked this question. I talked about the kingdom parables. You, if you understand that, you are a scribe. You are a master of house, head of the house. Uh, we need, we, we'll get the meaning of it later on. Uh, but if you are a master of house, then you have something. And like a storehouse, then you're going to, you know, put the treasure in it, and then later on, you're going to give it to all the people who are in need. So, as a master of a house, there's certain things that you need to really get it. She's just warning about the end of age. You need to know what's going to happen at the end of age. That's the future aspect of the kingdom. Like I said, separation. On the day of judgment, um, verse 49, so it'll Ill will be at the end of age. The angel will come out and separate the evil from the righteous. Uh, so at the end of age, there is going to be separation. So weeds and wheat, the evils and righteous, they're going to grow together. They're going to spend time together. But at the end of age, the angel will come out and separate evils from the righteous. So um, we need to know that there's going to be the day of judgment. Uh, there's a store named like Forever 21. It's not going to be Forever 21. It's going to be the end time. You might feel that, you know, you're going to be that young for a long time, forever. No. In my, in my mind, uh, I'm still 21. <laughs> when I try to play basketball, <laughs> that's how I feel all the time. That's why I try to get the ball, and then I sprain my ankle. You know what I'm saying? My body doesn't follow my thoughts. My mind is... Forever 21. And then I try to get the ball and I try to you know, do something. That's why I get hurt. Um, but you know what? That's going to be the day of judgment. That is going to be the end. Um, this is the teaching that he wants to uh, teach to his disciples. Um, Interesting thing is, the separation from like, the evil from the righteous has already done on earth. The weeds and wheat, they're there on the earth already. But there's going to be time that God will separate them. So we need to know that we're going to go together up until the day of judgment. And at the time, God is going to separate the evil from the righteous. Uh, there are living people who are not part of the church. So that's the kind of uh, thing that we need to know. Even though we are all together in the church, there are weeds in the church. There are evil in the church among the righteous uh, there must be reason why God taught this to his disciples because they need to carry out the calling and mission as a scribe as a master of house 
Another thing is, at the end of age, you're going to have hell. This is truth. Uh, there is heaven and hell. Not many people want to hear about the hell, but there is hell. In these days, churches don't speak about the hell because people don't want to hear that. But there is hell. You know what? Jesus is the one who talked about the hell the most than anybody else. He talked about hell and he described the hell in so many ways. Uh, many people don't want to hear that and they don't really notice that. That's why they live their daily lives in that way. They live as if there is no hell and heaven after life. Oh, let's enjoy today. Or sometimes, you know, they believe reincarnation. There's no end. So you could have second chance, third chance, and fourth chance. You know, you could have a lot of chances. But let's do our best to have better life later on. There's going to be the end. And there's going to be the day of judgment. And if you're not part of God's kingdom, you will go to hell. That's the uh, God's advance warning. Uh, God has given that warning to humanity a lot from the beginning, Adam and Eve. If you eat this fruit, you're going to die, surely die. God gave them a warning. But Adam failed to hear that. And he ate the forbidden fruit. What about the Noah? God warned them, you know, rebellious people, you know, there is going to be the flood. And people made fun of Noah. They didn't hear that. And there was judgment day, flood. Only eight people will survive. Same thing. Because we are the ones who proclaim this warning as a representative of Jesus Christ. We need to talk about the hell. Whether they want to hear it or not. Let's talk about the hell. <laughs> what do you know about hell? Um... From this uh, parable, we could see that this is the place of torment. Um, unbelieved torment. Unbelieved torment and suffering and pain. That's the place of, you know, we call hell. Right now, you're, you're thinking that, oh, I'm, my life is really tough and difficult, and I, I'm, I'm really painful. You cannot even compare that pain with this pain, this unrelieved torment and pain and suffering. She just described it in that way. If you look at verse um, 50, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. Furnace of fire, they're going to be thrown into the furnace of fire. Another passage, Jesus said, even worms, they don't die. Unrelieved torment, unrelieved suffering, unrelieved pain. That's the place 
we call hell. There's a lot of whipping, gnashing of teeth because of they cannot even, you know, um, bear that pain, bear that torment. That's why Jesus, God, warned them so many times. Don't go there. I don't want you to go there. There's a way to be saved. And it is out of darkness. Outer darkness. That's a deep pit darkness. Darkness that's out of from lightness. Uh, there's no light. Um, and the, another trait of the hell is endless, eternal. Think about it. When you are in this thick darkness and there is an unbelieved torment, it's not going to be gone. And you need to have that torment and suffering because of the furnace of fire. And then it, it's not going to be end. Endless and eternal. That's the hell. Um, people don't want to hear that. Or they don't even notice this. They don't really care about that. Oh, that's a lie. I don't care. Whatever. But Jesus was the one who spoke about this hell the most. Because he knows it. And he kept on giving them warning. If you look at Luke chapter 16, Jesus even gave them another parable about the hell. The rich man who cried out in torment. And he said, cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. Would you give just one drop of water? It's not going to be happening. Unrelieved, endless torment. Another thing is, it is both body and soul. You might just think about the soul, right? But you're going to have resurrected body. After Jesus comes again, second coming of Jesus Christ, we're going to receive resurrected body, right? We don't know what kind of body that we're going to have, but many people say that like, after Jesus rose again from the dead and he met up with his disciples, right? That kind of body. Thomas was able to touch the hands of Jesus. But the resurrected body will be given to the lost. And they're going to suffer both in body and soul. This is a really serious issue and matter. But people don't want to hear that. People don't want to even get to know that. But Jesus wanted his disciples to know at the end of the day, a, age, there's going to be a day of judgment and all the evil, all the weeds will be thrown into this furnace of fire, hell. God never prepared for people. He prepared for the devil. Satan and his angels. But his uh, people choose to go to hell. They got deceived. That's why Jesus, you know, uh, taught them, like, you'll be set free if you know the truth. Satan will give you deception, all the lies. Don't, don't believe this. Just enjoy your life. No, you need to prepare for your afterlife. 
there is going to be hell. Let's really think about this is a part of his training his disciples, right? Why? Why did he give this parable to his disciples as a training? Here's another warning. As they carry out the calling and mission on the kingdom of, you know, world, about the kingdom of God, there is a time that they're going to be discouraged and frustrated and disappointed, right? That's why Jesus taught this parable about hell, the end time, the day of judgment, uh, for his disciples not to be discouraged. They need to have spiritual discernment. Um, spiritual discernment is needed for the disciples when they carry out the mission. Uh, Jesus wanted them to be aware of the fact that there would be the weeds, the bad evils among weeds, the good and the righteous. Um, as you go out, and share the gospel as a disciple. And you will see this kind of truth. Spiritual reality. There is going to be weeds among the wheat. There is going to be evil ones among the righteous. So if you do not know that, you will be so discouraged. I, I thought that he was the part of our kingdom. That's not it. You see what I'm saying? You shouldn't be discouraged by all the evil ones or weeds, what they're doing among the weeds, with, even in the church. As you carry out the ministry, you need to know there is going to be weeds. You need to know how, know how to discern them. Satan, he has, he has a, his own scheme to deceive the true believers by putting his own agent among God's children in the church. So we need to know Satan, his scheme. Another reason, another reason of warning not to be discouraged is there's going to be surely day of judgment. Just as Psalmist stated a lot, it seems like the wicked are prosperous. The righteous are going through various hardship. It seems like, you know, they are doing good, succeeding, right? Prosperous. That's why, you know, all the, the ones who, are, who wrote Psalms, they complain. They're kind of doubting about what's happening, God's care. And God's providence, right? Just like that, we might have that. Or disciples might have that. Why? We get all the persecutions. Even though we have the truth, we have the treasure, we should have some kind of good things, right, in our daily lives. But so many bad things are happening. Even these people are among us, and we get so confused and frustrated. And in addition, this world teaches us that the other things like reincarnation. There's not going to be an end. Just enjoy. We feel like, you know, we are, we are wasting our time comparing, you know, people who are enjoying their lives. Right? Having party, hanging out with friends, you know, doing all that. You know, we envy them sometimes without even knowing 
but it's a day of judgment. Jesus wanted his disciples to be able to have a bigger picture that he himself have had concerning the redemptive plan. As a disciple, think about it, as you know, disciple of Jesus Christ, you're going to live your days and weeks and months and years. Uh, you're going to face that reality. Sometimes you get so confused. Um, the wicked are prosperous. They are succeeding. They are in the higher social standings. Um, what are you going to do with that? Even though I come to the church for service and worship God, I have some kind of you know, personal devotional time here and there. I dedicate my life for the sake of gospel and everything. But it seems like you know, the wicked are prosperous. Something wrong with this. And you get discouraged. But the thing is, we're going to have weeds among us. The evil ones among us. And there's going to be day of judgment. According to his redemptive plan. Don't be discouraged. Don't be uh, dismayed. Because there's going to be end time. And there's going to be day of judgment. And then she just asked, do you guys understand all of this? Even this? And then he said, if you, then you are a master of house. First of all, you need to understand the treasure, how valuable it is. You need to, like, you know, you could like, sell everything that you had and then buy that treasure. You need to understand the value of the treasure. You need to understand all the treasures about the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus asked, do you guys understand? Without understand, and then understanding about this treasure, then you cannot be the scribe, a disciple, or a master of house. You're going to live as a slave or servant. That's it. Thankfully, his disciples answered, yes, we understood. Uh, since you understood about the kingdom of God, you're a scribe. As we understand, scribe is all negative. Right? All the religious leaders, Sadducees, or Pharisees, you are scribes, right? Um, but the scribe, let me quote from Warren Wiersbe. He said, The scribes began as a novel group under the leadership of Ezra. Their purpose was to preserve the law, study it, and apply its truth to daily life. Over the years, the novel cause degenerated into a routine task of preserving traditions and man-made interpretations and adding burdens to the lives of the people. If you look at Luke chapter 11, verse 46 to 40, uh, 52, they were too wrapped up in the past that they ignored the present. Instead of sharing the living truth from God's word, they merchandised that doctrines and embalmed uh, traditions that could not help the people. So scribe, their job was preserve preserve the law, study the law, and apply. It's truth in daily lives. That's, that's the kind of mission, the role of scribes. 
Jesus called disciples, if you understood this kingdom of God, you are a true scribe who will preserve the law and study the law and apply its truth in your daily lives. That's a scribe. These scribes will be trained. But Jesus, he trained his disciples, right, as a scribes about the kingdom of God. Jesus taught them and took them to the various fields to let them know that he is the Christ. He is the Christ and about the kingdom of God. This is how they discover the treasure. You need to understand the treasure. Just like I said, guarding the treasure. You need to guard the treasure as a scribe. You not just understand, you don't just understand the treasure, how valuable it is, but your job is to guard the treasure. Keep the treasure in the storehouse. That's why he called the master of house. You are the one who are guarding the treasure because it is really precious. It's a hidden treasure, right? You need to guard the treasure and study it, manage it. Not only that, you need to dispensing the treasure. The master of house will dispense the treasure to the people based on their needs. Um, if you look at people, they have certain needs, right? You'll be able to see them. You'll be able to analyze them. Um, and then you're going to dispense the treasure based on what they need. Um, and then he talked about all they knew. Verse 52. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. They knew the Old Testament, and now they have heard the mystery of the new kingdom. Right? They had an old covenant, Old Testament. They call it scripture. All the mosaic laws and everything, right? They knew about the old, but now Jesus trained his disciples about the kingdom of God in a new way. New covenant. So, um, so they are in kind of transition. They know about the new co uh, old covenant, Old Testament, and Jesus taught them a new covenant. So, kingdom of God in a new way. So that's why he said you need to dispense the treasure what is new and what is old. Um, nothing wrong with the old, but you need to understand new out of old. So we need to have both. Um, and we need to have the law and the gospel. Without having law, we don't need the gospel. You see what I'm saying? Law is 
given to us to understand we need the gospel. The law was not given to us to keep, to be saved. No. The law is tutor to lead us to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, old and new. Law and gospel. We need to know both of them and dispense the treasure to the people. I hope you guys understand. A lot of people are talking about the law, legalism. They always talk about the gospel or grace without having law. That's a cotton candy gospel. See what I'm saying? We need to understand the law and the gospel at the same time. And then we need to dispense it to the people who are in need. That's a scribe. That's why you need to be trained. You need to understand what the kingdom of God is all about. Especially the kingdom of God, you need to be poor. Right? It's not about you. It's about Christ. Right? It's not about you to try to keep the law, but it's about Christ who give you mercy and grace. So you need to know both and then preach. That's the scribe. That's the master of the house. So um, all of us here, we need to be trained as a disciples, as a scribe. Because uh, many people are so ignorant about hell. They don't know where they are going toward. We need to uh, really at least share the gospel. Um, I met up one remnant, and he, like she said, she has a heart. At least I need to preach the gospel. The choice is on, on them. But at the end of the day, if my friends are there, why did you, didn't you like, tell me that you are a Christian, you know the gospel, you have the treasure? I don't want to, you know, see that happen. That's why I want to give them opportunity. Right? I want to really share the gospel. Dispense. But we need to understand the treasure first. And we need to know how to guard the treasure. We shouldn't compromise. We need to leave it out. And then you need to dispense the treasure. What is old and what is new. Let's pray together. I don't want you to become like a gangster, but a trained soldier. Uh, it's not only through the emotions you might have. Passion, of course, I used to have that. But with just only passion, you're just gangster. You need to be trained with the truth. We need to know how to share the gospel. What they really need is the gospel alone. We need to be trained. Um, let's really become a scribe who has been trained for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom of God. Let's pray together.